faith is the demonstration of absolute trust in the midst of unforeseen realities. One Faith is a program designed to bring you stability in your journey of faith in God. I'm always excited to be here with you on One Faith Advocates Broadcasting Network. My name is Ijoma Etuk, and on today's show, we finally get to wrap up Destiny Under Construction. Oh my God. And I'm so excited because today we are looking at the building blocks of God's building. After God has built you, after he has constructed you, so what do you look at? When people look at you, what do they see? I'm excited to be doing this with Pastor Obong Okon of the New Dawn Church. In case you just joined us today, let me let you in on who Pastor Obong is. Pastor Obong Okon is the lead pastor of the New Dawn Church, a fast-growing cosmopolitan church in the heart of Uyo in Akwaibom State, with emphasis on intimacy, partnership, and impact, where he disciples people through the revelatory preaching and teaching of God's word. He preaches and teaches the simple word of faith with strong prophetic and restorative grace, giving hope and ministering grace to people. Pastor Obong is also involved in people development with a focus on leadership training. His passion is to inspire an emerging generation of leaders in Africa. He is an author, a life guide, and a giver. He is married to beautiful glory and both reside in Uyo, with their beautiful children, Pastor Ubong Okon wow. of the New Dawn Church. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting. It's a joy to, to have here. you on this show, Pastor Ubong. Wow, I'm excited too. God has been faithful and I'm, I'm glad to be alive. Am I actually happy that we're wrapping up Destiny Under Construction? Well, you know, there's always something that God wants to say. Yes. So, uh, this has been a great time. The feedback has been phenomenal. People calling from across the globe, you know, people calling and asking questions. How yeah. did they get... A belt or what did they do? Some people are calling to encourage me and say, Pastor, you're doing great. Hmm. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. You know, there were people who joined us whose destinies were, um, let's say, shattered. Hmm. They didn't know who they were by the time they joined the show yeah, yeah. in the first episode. Hmm. And today God has, you know, shaped them. And by the end of today's show, you get to finally see what you're going to look like. When people look at you, they are going to see a different you, Pastor hmm. Obong. Hmm. The idea is the fact that I like to hear your testimony. Mm. You know, I want to be encouraged by what you God is doing in your life and how the word of God is shaping you. Because sometimes what God is doing is not just for you. Yeah. Someone has to be blessed by you. When God raised Joseph, he said to his brothers, you meant it for evil, but mm -hmm. God turned it around for my good to preserve you in the days of famine. So I can tell you that when God has raised you up, when God has built you up, it will be that God wants to use you to be a blessing to his people. And around the world, you're going to be a blessing to your family, yeah. your friends, and even me. I'm going to be glad to hear your testimony because God is doing amazing things. God is constructing you and it's about to finish. Pastor, I would love to ask this question. When we started this episode, Destiny Under Construction, did you have these building blocks in view? Or I'm did the revelation get clearer? As we were going well, on. you know, one thing I might I might tell you that as God starts, you know, teaching me something, yeah, um, how God begins is not how God ends. Mm. As you delve into it, yeah. the, the well gets deeper. That's true. In fact, even though we are ending this series now on this show, what I have with me, what God is teaching me based on this, is deeper and deeper. I can continue for the next one year. Mm. Because it, it never stops. It never we cannot exhaust the curriculum. I know I'm, I'm turning this into a writing and I want to use, I want to trust God to turn this into something that people globally will be excited and be encouraged to move on. You know, one thing about this series is that it tells you that your life does not end here and yeah. you are a work in progress. Mm. And I can never forget that. I will never, never forget that. So I'm encouraged to keep going. It's deeper than this. I can tell you it's deeper than this. Fine. So, so today we get to look at... Um God's building blocks. Yeah, yeah. And now it's noteworthy to understand that growing our abilities to hear God is very much pivotal mm. when we talk about this. How did you know that? I know that because <laughs> I am led by the Spirit of God. <laughs> well, in my journeys with God, um, I believe that how God started with me yeah. was to show me the picture of a future. 
Mm. It, it's amazing how God will show you things that practically are impossible. Wow. How do you tell a boy, Joseph is my focus for this part? Yeah. How do you come to a boy who is a, he's the least in his family, and you come and show him a picture that his star will rise higher, even the sun and the moon mm -hmm. will bow to him. And everybody in their house has a gift of interpretation. <laughs> so they interpreted the dream and they understood what it meant. How do you come to a boy like David? The youngest in the house with no antecedent, no hope, no pressure, no, nothing to show that there's something about him. In fact, he was in the bush. And you tell him, you're going to be a king. God has an amazing way of coming to people in the worst days of their lives hmm. and telling them something, and I'm taking you to somewhere. IJ, if you think about your life, you will know that there was a, there was a time in your life where God sowed the seed of where you are now. Hmm. There was a season where probabilities were now laid out. Seeds were sown. Ideas were brothered. A dream in your heart that one day I'm going to be sitting on the TV. I'm going to be talking to people, helping lives. And then it was totally like it will never happen. And today is a, is a fulfillment of that word. So what God does first for everyone in this life, God begins by showing you a picture of the future. It comes like a dream. Some people is a, what I call progressive revelation. Where from one thing led to the other, another thing led to the other. You come to that point and say, wow, this is where I'm going. Some people come and they have a dream. A, a dream of the night. I don't mean malaria dream. I don't mean, uh, you know, food dreams. <laughs> but they have a dream. And they wake up with this. Like, this is what God showed me. I mean, so how do I see? I, I preached many times in my dreams as a young boy. I was six years old when I saw an angel in my room. So I woke up from that dream, from that experience. I just rose up and I saw this beautiful thing standing by my window and smiling at me, all bright and beautiful. The whole house was like power came. You know, we didn't have power. Everything was so bright. And I ran to my mother, come and see the man standing by my window. And my mom came out and did not see. I said, I'm, look at this man, he's smiling at me. <laughs> smiling at me. And then my father then took me to the church and told the priest, these boys begin to have revelations. One week after, I had a dream of preaching in the stadium, preaching to a crowd I'm not seeing yet. I've had, consequently, God has shown me phenomenal things. And I've discovered the first thing that God does in that building block of a man's destiny when God wants to construct you is to show you a future that looks impossible now. And then, Bring you from where you are and begin to walk you out into it. First of all, I was actually very confused as a teenager. Mm. I didn't know where to, I, I just did not know where to pitch my tent. Let me, you know, put it that way. I, I felt like, okay, fine. I could do sciences really well. And if I happen to major, you know, in arts, I would do pretty well too. Mm. So, you know, I just was that teenager who was graced in different areas, mm. you know, but just looking for who to say, this is where exactly you should be. Yeah. I remember going to this pharmacy one of those days to get some drugs for my big sister. And I was there and there was this queue, it was in the night. And this man who was, you know, giving me these drugs, you know, was just looking at the TV. I think it was news. And there was this woman then, her name is Ruth Opia. I don't know if you know that woman. Mm. You know, yes, yeah, yeah, Ruth yeah. Opia. She was many you know, years ago. Many years ago. You see, I'm I'm, I'm an old lady, right? <laughs> <laughs> many years ago, and this Ruth was, you know, I think she was doing news at the time. So I was just very fascinated. Oh, I love the way this lady speaks. So the man just, you know, saw the way I was paying attention to this TV. <laughs> And he said, oh, do you know that you look like this lady? I'm like, I've mm. not seen the resemblance. So I looked at the lady again, and I had met her within me. I'm like, oh, I think I'd love to be like this in the future. It just was a burning desire. I didn't know mm. how it was going to happen. But many years down the line, 
Mm. <laughs> that, that's what I'm telling you. Yeah. It's more, everyone listening to me right now, you're watching this video from across the world, you will remember there was a day that there was a desire. Yes. There was a burning desire in you to become something. You had this dream of being a medical doctor. You had this dream of healing people. You you were you were you found a problem and you felt like you can solve it. This is how God begins your life journey. That is why it's key for everyone to learn how to hear God. Mm. If you can't hear God, your life is done. Mm. In fact, your ability to hear the Lord, hear what God is saying, receive the word, understand the mind of God is key. You no, know, parents make the mistake of trying to clone their lives on their children. Mm. Now, this is something that we do. My father tried to make me a lawyer. And he mm -hmm. tried, he complained to my, <laughs> he complained to everyone around me. I told him to be a lawyer. I need someone to inherit my law firm and uh, take care of my books and all that. And he said all kinds of things consistently kept bugging me. But my heart was panting after something else. And so, how do we find the anchor of our soul? In the midst of our confusion, like you said, how do we find it? The key thing is for you to hear what God is saying. Some people are privileged and God reveals it to them by revelation, by a word, by a desire, by a friend. Somebody tell you, you can do this. Now, if we read through scripture, you know, Peter, James, and John, they were all, in fact, the disciples were about four families. Peter had a brother by name, Andrew. So the brother came and said, come and see. Now, the, he became a disciple because somebody said, come and see. Nothing more. So sometimes someone is going to tell you that this is what you can become and it becomes the word of God for you. My mom is my destiny helper, Pastor Wow, Wong. I need to celebrate her wherever I she is I would right have now. made, you know, mistakes that would have ruined my life if not for my mom. Mm. Even when I took up sciences, went to school, my mom would still call me and say, hmm, this thing you're doing, you know, I know you're trying to, you know, read and pass your exams. I know your brother is seeing you through school and you want to make him happy, but I don't think this is where you should be. You see, so those words will come, I will digest them, but I'll just keep moving. Mm. But after youth service, I realized that this woman has been making sense. I am the one who has <laughs> not been paying attention. So I finally gave heed. Wow. <laughs> like so the word of my scripture. mom was that person, or she is still that person who would dream. Pastor, but do you know how many times, you know, I had just um, dressed up to go see a guy somewhere? Hmm. Yeah, making this confession on national TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I would just dress up in school as an undergraduate. You want to, you, you just want to do what other people are mm, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think mm. your phone is ringing. People are admiring you and they want to see you and all of that. I just would be dressing up. So my phone would ring and it's my mom. That thing you want to do. God said you should not do it. <laughs> This I woman was mom. treading me everywhere. I love your mom. That thing you want to do, don't, of course, I would not admit to wanting to do anything. I, said, I don't know what me? you're talking about. <laughs> but in my mind, I am grateful for this woman. I'm grateful for this pointer and this example. This and I don't know how many of us are, you know, that kind of example to our children or people around you. What are you really doing with the gifting of God upon your life? Is that somebody you're guiding through? Wow, wow, remarkable. I just said something. Now, the power of a praying mother. Mm -hmm. The power of a praying mother towards their children. Yeah. You know, and many times these things are very prophetic. When you pray for someone, it's almost like God has to show you something about their lives. Yeah. So the more you pray for your husband, the more you have this spiritual inclination towards That's them. That's true. And so, and so it, it's key for us to be able to hear the right people. If you hear friends and family, if you hear what the people are saying, you are going to be misled. You need to hear someone who is hearing God. That's why it's good to go to church. Where in the atmosphere of the word, I did that some things that happen in church. I've learned this over the years. God is the only one that will take paracetamol and cure all kinds of diseases. Mm -hmm. Under the same atmosphere, cancer will be healed. Yeah. The same word. That's true. Migraine will go. That's true. People will be hearing what you did not say. That's true. Now, last Sunday in our church, I asked our people, please, what did you learn today? And someone said something I, I cannot find in, in, your notes. in my notes. Because while at the word was coming, God is speaking to you. He's saying something to you. That's why it's very key for people to hear the right thing. Because yeah. direction, direction from God is key. Where is your life heading? What's your life all about? 
What are you going to do in the next five years? In the next 10 years? Can you, can you pinpoint? Can you point out to that place that God is taking you? Because the first thing in that building block of God's life, of God's construction upon your life is prophetic direction. Where are you heading? Because you would build for the next 20 years and realize that uh, my ladder has been leaning yeah. on the wrong wall. You will need to come down and start all over again. Some people, I am saying this with all amount of humility, some people get to the end of their life and they are realizing that they have been living a wasted life. It's so bad. It's so pathetic. So I really want to encourage somebody, now hear God. How do I hear God? The Bible says, faith coming by what? Hearing. By hearing. And hearing, hearing by the word, of, the word God. of God, you need to hear what God is saying to you by the word in the place of prayer. Oh, I, I can't talk about prayer. Luke 18 verse 1, that means ought always to pray and not, not to faith. I discovered that the moment I want to hear God, the first thing I do is to set the atmosphere, kneel down and ask the Lord, talk to me. Prayer is the two-way communication. Mm -hmm. What we do most times, I learned this over the years, that believers, we just enter the place of prayer. God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. If you don't give me, give me, give me. And then, and then uh, after we are done shouting, we have not sat down to say the Lord, so what is the answer? What are you saying to me? So they have to be. So that is how we hear God, by God's word, and then by, by prayer, and through people, through people, God has sent our way. And then we'll be able to find, but you see the key thing is that when God speaks to your heart, deep down, there's going to be that peace. The Bible says that this is the peace that surpasses all understanding. You know, how much peace do you have now in what you're doing? Because that's the key. That's the signal that God is here, that what you're doing is remarkable. I, I can sit on this studio for the next five hours preaching non-stop and not wondering what to say next yeah. because it's it's grace i'm designed for this i'm cut out for this i'm made up for this god has given me so much grace and a favor and understanding because i found my place why people struggle is that they are in the right wrong places and doing the right thing then you're going to struggle all your life so it is key divine direction is very very key. it's amazing how we do not seek God unless we're in trouble. No, not naturally now. You yeah, know that so human beings wouldn't do that. Trouble yes. would motivate you. It's part of why God when allows When things are it. going the way you want them to go, you will not seek God. You think you don't have any reason to get to God in prayer because, I mean, things are going pretty well. But when you hit the rock, <laughs> when something happens, someone is sick, you are broke, you have a problem at your workplace, then you now begin to seek God. You know, at that point, you're like, you want to get something from him. But like Pastor Bon said, Prayer is a two-way communication. You have to be able to get to your father, not just because you want him to give you something, but because you want to have communion. You want to be able to relate with your father, get to hear him, then speak back to him. Yeah. All right. So I, I think I want us to move forward a little bit. All right. After God shows you the picture, God comes back and begins to reorganize your life. I call this life experiences yeah you know something will lead to something that will lead to something that yes. will lead to something that will lead to something and then it will lead to something that will get you to where god wants you to do i discovered that god wants you to manufacture cement yes ij god can begin you from selling recharge cards mm. Now, and you will ask me, how does the two things relate? What's the correlation? It doesn't correlate when you look at it physically. But I had an experience when I was doing my IT years ago. I was working in a firm. Um, I read physics in school. Really? And yes. You I don't, didn't know that. <laughs> that is life for you. And then we, during my IT days, and then um, I came out and I saw a lady who was selling recharge cards and some few things outside. She spoke proper English, good English, Queen's English, you would say. I said, whoa. Uh, hello, uh, so have you gone to school? It's, uh, the lady said to me, Pastor, I am a graduate of English mm. and I, I had a first class my from God. my school. So I asked, so what are you doing? He said, well, um, I'm done with school. I don't have a job yet. Instead of being lazy, I sit down. Let me learn something. Let me do something with my life. Do you know that right in front of that shop where she was selling under an umbrella, she was selling recharge cards, and things alike. A man came to buy a recharge card. To my shock, she spoke the same way she spoke 
with me. And the man said, come on, what are you doing here? The man said, I don't have a job. She got a job in the bank. Few, I, I don't know what took me to that bank. And I saw the same lady wow. that, I, that was looking for help from me. Sitting across the banking hall, few months after, and telling me, sir, how may I help you? <laughs> I, I almost fainted <laughs> under the anointing. But you see, she did not just end up in the bank. She ended up as a, a big businesswoman. But mm. the journey of that business began from selling recharge cards. Mm. So what I'm trying to say, God has a way of reorganizing your life to bring you to the place. I began from a, as a musician. I was a keyboardist, drummer, bassist. What was I not doing in a church? I was doing everything. And then God began to tell me, I choose you not to do this. There's something more than this. So God begins your journey from somewhere. In real sense, after he has shown you the picture, it comes back and begin to walk. Now, why does God use life experiences to teach you tenacity? Mm -hmm. Patience. I, I had to be in one place for 25 years. Mm, don't say that. I, I don't think it was sweet. <laughs> I had to be an employee wow. in an organization before I began the New Dawn Church for 25 solid years. Before then, there were bouts of two years and two years and one year. There were trickles. But God had me stay in one place for that long. 25 years. 25 solid years. Before the birth of the New Dawn Church. And for me, I, I, I can tell you that all the wisdom, the understanding, the, the ideas, I found them sitting there and doing nothing. I had pressures on those years. People offered me better jobs. I can't forget how I was in Lagos. And a man said to me, ah, I heard you do this. Come and work for me. I'm going to pay you five times your salary. Mm. I offer you a job with a car. Attractive distractions. My God. I mean, this was <laughs> remarkable. I came back home and I told my wife, mm. I'm under pressure right now because we need to feed the family. <laughs> we need to pay school fees. My wife said, remember what God told you at the beginning? That until it comes for you, don't change your mind. So I called the guy and I Such apologized. Such a virtuous woman. It was a, it was a, it was a turning point. Do you know, I wouldn't be here. Mm. I would not be here if I took that offer. And so I had opportunity, but I stayed. It was painful. I stayed. What did I do? I learned patience. I learned stamina. I learned tenacity. I learned inner strength. I grew up. I built up. I, had, I was given opportunities that nobody ordinary would give you. I was helped. I, was, I became friends with people. I built relationships. In that place, I call it a time where life experiences yeah. constructs you to that place where God has in mind. So I can look back and I say that 25 years, it was long, but I did not waste it. I learned something. Mm. That David learned something in 13 years of running around. Joseph learned something. In 13 years of being well, Pastor a Bob, do, does it have to be so long? Well, uh, does it have to be so long? Does it have to be 10 think, years, think, 13 years, 25 think, years? No, I think it depends on you. Hmm. I didn't know until later. Because the, the, the easier you align with God, God's, God's, God's plan for your life. You know, we fight a lot. We struggle with God's ideas a lot. I, I know people that, that don't want to be pastors when God has called them to be pastors. I found a lady in the bank and I told her recently, I said, young lady, don't pastor people. You're not called to pastor bank notes. You're called to pastor people. She's going to the bank and every time I show her, she's trying to teach me a scripture. She's trying to say, pastor, let me preach to you. I said, don't preach to me. Go and preach to people because you want to pastor in the bank. Do you, <laughs> no, I'm tempted to ask you a question. Uh, I won't please, ask you. Please don't ask. <laughs> But there are many, there are many farmers mm. called by God to farm, yeah. and then they are trying to farm human beings. They are, look at Jesus told Peter, "Follow me, and I will make you fishers, fishers of men." Of men. You were called to fish men, not mm -hmm. fish fishes. But you see, because you've not been able to have the right way of going about it, you are busy doing wrong things. You will find yourself in a place, and you'll be busy doing all kinds of things. I just think the most, you know, the most painful thing for a believer would be to, you know, just be here, you know, on earth, roaming about, not um, discovering your purpose, and not fulfilling that purpose for which God has created you. It's the worst state of life. It's the worst state of life. Imagine that you're there where you're not supposed to be toiling, putting so many years, 
yet you're not getting the results you're supposed to get and you're not there because this is not where God wants you to be. Many people, I, I'm telling you in my life, when you find yourself in the right place, life becomes easy. Now, so a lot of people live life purposelessly. You mean? We are just going wherever um, life pushes you. That's where you are pushing. You see, this picture at the beginning becomes mm. the anchor. It keeps you straight. It keeps you going somewhere. I get there's no amount of favor. There's no amount of distraction I can get. I, how do I say this? There's nothing anyone can offer me now that will stop me from preaching the gospel. Mm. No. Mm. You can, if you bless me, I'll use it to <laughs> preach the gospel. Bring the money now. I'm going to preach the gospel. Yeah. Give me more money. This world will go around the globe. But what I'm trying to say, there's nothing anyone can do to distract me from preaching the gospel. I will never stop preaching. Paul said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Mm. Why? I know I have no other reward from God mm. except I preach the gospel. Now, imagine a traveling warden that was employed by the government to be traffic warden here in this particular junction. And you live there and go somewhere else. Come on. When it's time to be paid, how would you be paid? Because you are doing the wrong things. All right, so a lot of people need to have that direction. That's very key. Now, the third thing I want to share is the fact that as God builds you, you need to build you in service. You know, this is my 25 years. I had to serve. I, I served. I, I, I served. I don't know how other, <laughs> you know, when, when you are going to be everything. Yeah. God uses these things to bring you down, teach you how to serve. There's no one, there's no one high up there who did not serve. So. I, I can tell you that even you, if I look, I know I, I, like, I like to use an example. Mm -hmm. Even you right now, right now, you served. Yeah. You've labored. You've given time. So you see, it's part of that building block of God. God makes men to serve because he wants you to be served. You have no right to demand service when you have not served. Look at it. Every great man, greatness is defined in the place of service. service. And even when they have risen to the place of greatness, they have there has to be a way of still serving. So that for me is one of the building blocks. It is practically impossible for anyone to rise to the place of greatness without God making you serve one way or the other. David served. Bible says Acts 13 verse 36. After David served his generation. Mm. So um, don't run away from service. Don't run from service. Because that's how God works with you. Every opportunity that God gives to you is not for you to, to exploit. It's an opportunity to become who God has in mind for you. So serve. 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 I don't know how to say this. Whatever opportunities come for you, you serve. And I think that that is a very powerful building block. And that's why, that's why it's long, IJ. It's long. You know, in the, in the, in the evil culture, there's this seven years thing, you know. So, uh, am I correct? Yeah, apprenticeship. Yeah, apprenticeship. So they come and serve for seven years. And after you are done, your master is going to find one way or the other to establish you. Now, the able man's philosophy is seven years. I don't know how God's, uh, God might be 10 years, might be 20 Pastor years. Pastor Bong, it's actually beautiful that we shed light on this service. Hmm. Why am I saying this? Because in most churches now, you have youths, you know, who are trying to discover their path. Yeah. You have young people who are zealous for God, but at the same time, these young people are schooling. So they always find themselves, you know, at the spot where they have to choose God or choose training. Mm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Now, I am speaking from experience because I also was in a campus fellowship while I was in the university. And I saw how a lot of people, you know, gave up studying because they wanted to serve the Lord. And that would also be because the person at the helm of affairs we did not have, you know, some good guidance. You have men of God or people who are overseeing you and they do not know how to strike a balance to tell these young people, if you don't study, you're going to fail your exams. Of course. And if you fail, you're going to have an extra year. Mm. So, and if you don't serve God, you're going to suffer. Do you understand? Sure. So we want people to serve and we are trying to encourage them. And at the same time, we are threatening them. Mm -hmm. So they are seeing the Lord as a consuming fire. If you don't do this, God will do this to you. <laughs> <laughs> you are where you are. Your family is where your family is because you are the deliverer and you're not doing anything to remedy your people. So this is the gospel we're preaching to these people. So what do they do? They are serving in fear. Mm. Mm. They are serving with the wrong reverence, not to God, 
Mm. But through the pastor, Pastor Bom, mm. why mm. am I? We have you know lots of young people who are trying to find their path. That's why I'm saying this. They want to get direction. If you look into your church right now, there are lots of young people sure, sure. who are trying to see. Oh, how do I do this? They want to serve God. At the same time, they want to be useful in life. Yeah. So, Pastor Bong, how do you strike the balance? How do you get these people to be responsible adults tomorrow, to be useful to themselves, the family, and the nation as a whole? And how do you also strive to not lose them in the kingdom? Well, the pastor must understand the place of uh, holistic growth. You can't grow in the things of God, grow only in prayer, and then your physical life is a mess. But that's what we see today. No, that is not right. That you, you know what they call kwashoko. Yes, I when do. When you are eating one kind of food, when when you are not having a balanced diet, so the whole essence of that's why many churches. If make, you go to some choir right now, go to churches, Pastor Paul, take statistics. Go to some choir now. You see people who have dropped out from school. Mm. Check keyboardists. Check instrumentalists. Check the people who are singing unto the Lord, Pastor. I like the way you're looking at me. Are you, are you serious <laughs> right now? Well, that's the truth. Because they have majorly mm. one thing, because they want to be seen as people who do this for the Lord, but they are not useful to themselves. These people are people their parents have given up on mm. because they have not been able to bring back home the result for which they left the house for. But in church, they are celebrated because they are working in the house of God. No, but there has to be a balance. You mm -hmm. know, I, I was raised where there was balance. I had to go to school. I actually went to a physical school. Were you really in the campus fellowship when you were in school? Yes, I had an opportunity to be in campus fellowship. It's difficult to Were balance. you carrying it on your head? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even have the time to do that. Because I, no matter how I wished I was there, because it's, there's an experience about campus fellowship. You can't, you can't explain it. There's something about young people in school and when they carry God, when they find God, but you see the key thing and the key word here is balance. All right, so Very we must important. grow people because there's a future. Mm -hmm. There's a future, there's a morning time of your life and there's an afternoon time of your life and there's an evening time of your life. And one day you'll be in the night and what you don't learn now, you're gonna, you will be forced to learn tomorrow. Now, I, I think about this, you know, the church economy is around skills, you know, and give things because the kingdom of God must have to propag be propagated through music and through all kinds of media and all of that. And it's important for have, us to have people who actually do those things so that because the kingdom has to progress. Now, because the world system is also um, taking advantage of those skills and advancing. So the kingdom needs those skills to advance. But see, the truth is, is there has to be one way where there's a balance. I am laughing. You know why? Why? Because I know that, you know, in the course of time, Pastor Bong, mm -hmm. you know, some of these pastors, in order to still have this talent or to still tap into this talent or retain this talent in the house of God, they begin to do arranging. Mm, I don't know that part. I am telling you, <laughs> you know, you begin to tell the sister, a, a vibrant sister in church, and you're seeing that, oh, this sister is really very instrumental in this mm. choir. And this brother is also visionary. I think this two will make a good what, match. Was that your experience? And the pastor <laughs> begins to, you know, tell the sister, thing, or maybe inspire the brother to, you know, stay with the sister, talk to the sister. Mm. Pastor, well, don't look at me like that. Mm, These things happen. I have to look at you. Well. These things happen. <laughs> I do not agree. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, now I get it. Now I get it. It was going to happen, but I, I knew what I wanted from the, the beginning. The fact is, IJ, the truth is this. When you have a, a valued staff, when you have someone around you yeah. on your team that has value and is contributing, is doing so well, you don't want to lose them. That's true. Uh -huh. so I, not, I like the fact that you're admitting to that. No, I agree. I agree. Nobody wants to lose a star. But have you ever thought of um, arranging a brother with a sister before? I don't know what you're talking about. Pastor, what, what, exactly, <laughs> <laughs> what exactly are you talking about? In the place of service, that was what we're talking about. It's okay for you to serve God. It's okay that you give God your best wherever you are, whatever point in life that you are. Whether you're in school, of course, you know exactly where to draw the line so you can be a responsible adult and a good Christian at the same time. But do not give in to doctrines that, you know, push you into doing what you do not have to do, what mm. you know that this is not going to help me. You know, in the long run, you're doing it because whosoever that is overseeing you wants you to do that. 
you're getting married to this brother because oh the pastor wants you to do that because he wants to retain you in the church because of the services that you offer we see that a lot in the church mm, mm. Pastor Von, mm. no why why i agree with you on many terms but yeah you see, we also need to appreciate um what church the word church globally yeah, has become you know there are many young people i would not have had hope mm. even not for church that's true. Even not for my pastor. I wouldn't have had hope. My training, my rising, my growth, my the first pair of shoes I had was my pastor. The first traveling back was my pastor. The first passport I bought to travel out of the country was my pastor. So the church has done remarkably well in raising people. In fact, I think that in many churches, churches are run far better than most organizations. In fact, if you give this country to a church, they might do far better than this. Pastor Bong, I am, I <laughs> so there's am, a, there's I am a, a testimony to myself. Yeah, so there's a side to it. The other side is the fact that we need to be balanced. Yeah. We can't act God. We can't play God for people. We have to allow God to work with people. You know, you can't, you can't force someone to stay because in the name of service. For instance, I, my, my, my pastor let me go many times. Send me, I, I was one of the best guys around. So, okay, you go and be in Lagos. You step out of here and go and learn something. You build, become stronger. My experience out of my city. How many pastors do that? Wholeheartedly. Mm, they do. We still have remnants in the kingdom who are doing the right thing. So let's us appreciate that fact. But also, there ought to be some level of balance where people are properly taught. Invest in your men. Send them to school. You know, I can't count. I, I have over 13 certifications in leadership that I mm. got from my organization by working here. I can't, I can't count, I can't measure up so much and so much and so much. So I really, really want to appreciate that. But the fact that we need to have that balance, I am forever, 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 forever grateful to God for that opportunity. I hope I did not interrupt your flow. No, you, you did. You did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we needed to strike that balance. Nah, it's really. very, very, mm. very important. So as we uh, as we tidy this up, um, building blocks of um, of God's process, you, you discover that um, there's a coming time that God will begin to give you relationships. Yeah. You know, um, a part, a greater part of what you have become and what I have become is because of the quality of relationship that God has brought into my life. Someone, I wouldn't have been here without the instrumentality of, an, of a relationship. So it's, one of the things that God does is to bring people around you, critical people, key people. I believe that people are vitamins. Hmm. So vitamin people. Everyone, somebody in your life might be vitamin discipline. That's true. If my wife calls my pastor, I mean, carries her phone and just wants to dial my pastor, I ask, What's the have, I, have I offended <laughs> you today? Because my pastor yeah. is vitamin discipline. Discipline, okay. Is the vitamin honored for me. You know, so besides God, there are people, relevant people in my life, who are strong, who are more bold, who help me through life. Who make my, who make life worth living? I I don't I, I I have people I live for my children, critical relationships in my life, people, friends, families, and then people who God sends into your life. There are four kinds of people God will send to your life. Number one, helpers of destiny. Mm. God will send men to help you, yes. to hold your hand and walk you through life. Someone that will say, "Now behold the Lamb." Mm. God, John the Baptist did that, did that to Jesus. He yes. said, that is the lamb. And at that same moment, he was not afraid to lose his disciples because he lost disciples that day. Mm. They left him and followed Jesus. Someone that's going to point out that that's where you're going. You will also need bottom bearers, people who can bear your burden, mm. who, whom you can share your heart. Oh, this is what I'm going through. And they can stand with you. And then the, la the, la the third set of people you will need is people who will send you money. Mm. People who believe in what you are doing enough to give you funding. Because it's very critical. It's, it's like without money, without that level of support and, and relationships, there's some, you can, there's some things you will never do. But there will always be people like that who are there to release funds into your life. Then the last set of people you will need is people far ahead of you. I call them men of influence. Mm. People on the top of the ladder who mm. their name can open doors for you. So relationships are very important. I can't overemphasize on that. But Paul said you have many teachers. You can never have many fathers. That means you need fathers. You need mothers. You need people who can pray for you. Bottom prayer bearers. You need people who can support what you're doing. And I believe that when you have them, 
mentors, teach people you learn from, models. You mentioned a lady uh, wrote uh, what something. That she was at that time your model. She become your inspiration. Yeah. You need people like that. And then lastly, as we wrap this up, we need to also God helps helps you to deal with distractions in your journey. God helps you to stay focused. All right. So building blocks is that the fact that God will need you to not be distracted by things and by people to help you keep your eyes permanently on the prize. Mm. <laughs> It's been a very fulfilling time with you on One Faith Advocate Broadcasting Network. And I'm so excited that we get to wrap up this destiny under construction. And so today we have just dissected the building blocks of God's building. And I pray today that God sends you help on your journey. God will send you destiny helpers. God is going to send you people who are going to support your vision, whether be it funding. God is going to send you help in every way that you desire it. I love that you stayed with us through this time on One Faith Advocate Broadcasting Network. And I love that the word of God is already dwelling richly in you. And so I pray for you today that God sent you destiny helpers. He sent you people to help you on your journey, the building blocks. He sends you people that will give you fund and render all the help that you need on your journey. I love you. Till we see you next time. Stay tuned and God bless you. Bye for now. Faith is the demonstration of absolute trust in the midst of unforeseen realities. One Faith is a program designed to bring you stability in your journey of faith in God. Mm -hmm.